guys! It's your student nurse Danica back at it again with a new video. So for today, I would be demonstrating the pairing operative skills that needs to be done in the operating rooms of the hospitals. This is done to reduce the number of microorganisms present in our hands. It's also done to reduce the risk of transmission and cross-contamination. And surgical scrub removes resident and transient microorganisms in our hands. So first, what we need to do is to assess our hands. It shouldn't have any breaks such as hang nails or cuts. Our nails should be kept short, so if it's long, it should be cut. And we should remove all our jewelry to prevent harboring microorganisms, puncturing of the glo gloves, or scratching our patients. Moreover, breaks in the skin could increase the risk for cross-contamination. We would need our sterile gloves in our right side. Our sterile pa containing the sterile gum, so may kita natin meron siyang lines, meaning it's sterile, and our clean and dry surface. Next is to put on our protective attire. We should also pull our arm sleeves up to our shoulder level and remove all types of hand jewelries in our wrist. is of course, bago tayo gumamit ng mga sterile product is dapat sinecheck natin kung sterile nga ba sila. So, may kita natin dito sa pack na to, it's lined with black, that means it's sterile. And yung gloves natin is hindi naman open, hindi rin basa, and malayo pa sa expiration date, yung pagagamitan natin. First, we need to open our sterile pack containing our sterile gown, our sterile towel, and then we open our sterile gloves, and then Put the inner pack of the sterile gloves into the sterile field since only the inner wrap is considered sterile and only sterile objects can touch the sterile field. Now we perform our scrubbing of our hand. So for our surgical scrubbing, first we need our warm running water from the faucet that can be controlled by the hand, elbow or knee our antimicrobial surgical hand scrub which can be iodine or depends on what the hospital provides our nail cleaner our sterile brush and our disposable or sanitized towel in our sterile pack so first is we have to wet our hands we adjust the flow of the water so that the water is warm and then we wet our hands by holding them under the water letting it run from fingertips to elbows because our fingertips and our hands should be the cleanest and we cannot afford to let the microorganisms present in our elbows to drip to our hands and then we apply 2 to 4 ml of liquid soap to our hands. But this time, our hands should be held higher than our elbows during the hand wash. So now we thoroughly wash and rinse our hands. So just like with the medical hand washing, we rub our palms together, hand over hand, and then uh, fingertips against the palm of the opposite hand fingertips and nails individually, our thumbs and our wrist, and if you have a wedding ring, uh, wash beneath the wedding ring. And then we rinse our hands tolerably by letting the water run again from our fingertips to our elbows because we cannot let uh, the risk of letting the microorganisms present in our elbows to drip to our fingertips. So now we open our scrub bag containing the scrub brush and our nail cleaner. So. We either obtain the brush from our dispenser or individually packed and then our nail cleaner. We clean beneath and around each fingernail with a nail file or orange stick under running water. And then afterwards, after using it, we drop the nail cleaner in the sink. The outer part of our surgical scrub has soft bristles that is used to clean thin skin such as the dorsum of our hands and the inner bristles are contoured for effective deep cleaning of our fingers, nails, and cuticle. So now we place all the fingers of one hand together and brush across the nail tips for 30 strokes and then we mentally divide each finger and thumb into four planes or sides and scrub each plane or side separately for five strokes for a total of 20 strokes for each finger. This is to ensure that each plane and edge is cleaned properly. Next is we scrub the palm of each hand 
with 20 strokes in a circular motion. This is because circular motion forms a friction that mechanically eliminates microorganisms. Now we scrub the back of each hand for 20 strokes using a circular motion. And then using the same brush, scrub the other hand using the same technique as described earlier. So now for the arms, again we mentally divide one arm from wrist to 2 inches from our elbow or 2 to 3 sections or segments. And then we further divide each section or segment of one arm into 4 planes or sides to ensure that the hands and all edges are properly cleansed and all microorganisms are gone. And then beginning with the section or segment nearest to our hands, we scrub each plane or side with five strokes, again using a circular motion. And then using the same brush, we scrub the other arm using the same technique as described earlier. Afterwards, we discard or drop the brush into the sink. Now we rinse our hands and arms as we flex our arms and rinse it from fingertips to our elbows in a single smooth motion allowing water to drip from our elbows so again we should uh, follow the fingertip to elbow maneuver because we cannot risk any microorganisms flowing from our elbow to our fingertips because now our fingertips are the cleanest part of our hands we should always remember not to move our arm back and forth underwater because we should ensure that the water flows from fingertips down to the elbows because our hands should have the fewest microorganisms again by washing back and forth some microorganisms will work up from the elbows into our hands we should avoid splashing water or lather onto the surface of the scrub suit or gown as microorganisms thrive in wet or damp condition. Again, we should always keep our hands higher than our elbows to prevent water from running back from a non-scrubbed area to a scrubbed area because again, our hand is considered clean as possible. Okay, after releasing the water control, we allow the water to drip from our elbows for a few seconds before moving away from the scrubbing area. We shouldn't use our hands to turn the faucet off as this will violate the principles of scrubbing and we would have to start over again. Now we walk to our table containing our sterile towel while keeping a slight distance from it. We pick up the sterile towel by its folded edge without dripping water into the sterile field, allow the towel to unfold without touching anything. And then, we use one end of the towel to dry one hand completely using a rotating motion and moving from fingers to elbow. And then, use the other end of the towel to dry the other hand and forearm in that order. And now we drop the towel into the designated receptacle. This is in order to avoid microorganisms from being moved. So now, to put on our sterile gown, we identify the inner surface of the gown and pick up the gown beneath the neckband. The scrubbed root is considered unsterile, faces the inside sheet. Only the inner surface of the layer of the gown may be touched by the hands as they are both considered unsterile. We avoid touching the sterile field or the outer surface of the gown. We move away from the table, holding the gown away from the body at arm's length. We allow the gown to unfold from top to down. And we do not let the gown touch the floor and avoid dangling the gown against unsterile surfaces. Now we hold the gown just below the neckband near the shoulder. We slide both hands and work our arms partway into the sleeves until the fingers are at the end of the cuffs but not through the cuff. Okay, and now we have a co-worker grasp the neckties without touching the outside of the gown and pull the gown upward to cover the neckline of your uniform, front and back. And then let the person tie the gown. 
he should only touch the ties and not the front or side of the gown. Now we are going to put on our gloves. So first is we open the sterile wrapper containing the sterile gloves. And with the hands covered by the sterile gown cuffs, we open the inner sterile glove package. First, we put the glove on our non-dominant hand. This is because beginning with the non-dominant hand makes it easier to apply and guarantees sterility. With the non-dominant hand, pick up the opposite side with the thumb and index finger, handling it through the sleeve. We lay the glove on the opposite gown cuff, thumb side down, with the glove opening pointed towards the finger. Then we use the non-dominant hand to grasp the cuff of the glove through the gown cuff and firmly anchor it. With the dominant hand working through its sleeve, grasp the upper side of the glove's cuff and stretch it over the cuff of the gown. Pull the sleeve up to draw the cuff over the wrist as we extend or push the fingers of the non-dominant hand into the glove's fingers. It makes it possible to hold it fully and stretching of the cuff allows the hand to enter the gloves. Now we put the glove on the dominant hand. So again, we place the fingers of the gloved hand under the cuff of the remaining glove. We place the glove over the cuff of the second sleeve. We extend the fingers into the glove as we pull the glove up over the cuff. Okay, now we adjust the gloves for a fit and comfort while maintaining sterility. So this ensures that the hand fits snugly into the glove, ensuring that it is not too tight to avoid ripping or tearing during use and not too loose to avoid discomfort, slipping, and less grip control. So now, we have our co-worker who may be sterile or non-sterile. If the co-worker is sterile, he may use his gloves, but if the co-worker is unsterile, he should use a sterile forceps to grab the waist tie of our gowns. And then, we make a three-quarter turn and then take the tie and secure it in front of the gown or in the side of the gown. And then have a co-worker take the two ties of each gown and tie them out at the back of the gown, making sure that your uniform is completely covered. When worn, sterile gowns should be considered sterile in the front from the waist to the shoulder. And then the sleeves should be considered sterile from 2 inches above the elbow to the cuff, since the arms of a scrub person must move across a sterile field.